In 1926, a number of the greatest living Okinawan karate masters founded the Karate Research Club in Naha. Chojo Miyagi, Ken Mabuni, and other prominent teachers opened the dojo to instruct the young people of their province in the true ways of karate. These experts may have been encouraged by the success of the less experienced instructor, Gichin Funakoshi, who had become quite prominent on the Japanese mainland. Perhaps they felt that, after long centuries of secrecy, their art too had to be made public if it was to survive. Sadly, the venture was not a success. Previously, karate masters had chosen their own students and did not accept payment for tuition. Reversing this role to a point where anyone could train in exchange for the payment of a small fee was a break with tradition that was not easily made. The Karate Research Club Dojo, which stood on this site, was eventually closed, and Choju Miyagi, the wealthiest of the group, left to pay the debts. Cast adrift, their point of focus gone, the instructors went their separate ways. Choju Miyagi, prosperous from his family's herbal medicine business, continued teaching in Okinawa. He made occasional visits to Kyoto in mainland Japan, where he taught at Ritsmeikan University. He also taught in Hawaii for an extended period. Regarded as a Meijin, a true master of karate, by the Butokuden, the headquarters of Japanese martial arts, Miyagi was the founder of Goju Karate as we know it today. Kenwa Mabuni, his friend and junior, did not fare so well. Mabuni lived a precarious life as a police officer in Okinawa. Frequently short of money, few ties secured into his native land. Seeking a better life for his family and anxious to achieve for karate the status the traditional martial arts enjoyed he moved to the mainland. With his hopes high and the desire to succeed burning in his breast, he wrote, Clearing my mind of everything, with devotion and joyful anticipation, I row my boat towards the island of Bull. days in Osaka were not easy for Ken Wamabuni and his family. Ridiculed as a result of their Okinawan customs and rural accents, they felt the sting of discrimination that other Okinawans on the mainland were accustomed to. While Mabuni worked for his daily bread, Gichin Funakoshi was living in Tokyo at the Meisei Juku, a hostel for Okinawans and making a name for himself as a karate instructor. Funakoshi was an educated and eloquent man who had the good sense to open a dojo in the prestigious Keio University. Here, he recruited the sons of the wealthy and influential who would in time form the foundation upon which his success would be built. Funakoshi persuaded his students that karate should be practiced as an art form, a do in Japanese, for the improvement of mind and body, a radical departure from the views of his countrymen. This was in line, however, with the teachings of his mentor, Jigoro Kano, 
who had transformed the old and frequently lethal forms of jiu-jitsu into the modern art of judo. Choki Motobu, the noted Okinawan karate fighter, railed against this. Funakoshi, he stated, has only learned the outside appearance of karate. What he does has no practical application. He's an ingrate, a man who consumes rice but does no good for society in return. A confidence trickster who cheats people with his clever words. If he wants to open a dojo, make him fight me first, and he will run all the way back to Okinawa. Motobu did not make idle boasts. According to Yasuhiro Konishi, the founder of the style now known as Robukai, Motobu challenged a well-known boxer half his age to a fight. During their encounter, Piston Horiguchi was unable to land a single blow on the Okinawan, who emerged unscathed from the bout. It was said at that time that Choki Motobu was the best karate fighter in Japan, and Ken Wamabuni was the best and most knowledgeable teacher. Mabuni had studied intensively with two of the most famous Okinawan masters of the age. First with Anko Itosu of the Shuri school, then with Kanro Higaona of Nahate. As a mark of respect to his teachers, he took a Chinese ideogram from each of their names and combined them into the word Shito. Since it was formally adopted in 1929, this is a name by which the style has been known. As is the case in all traditional schools, training is based on a progressive regime that begins with basic techniques. All shitoryu techniques are distinguished by an economy of movement that, to an extent, masks their power and effectiveness. The movements are natural and relaxed, never forced or artificial and make the best possible use of the body's power while maintaining balance and the ability to move quickly in any direction. The body is kept as level as possible, the feet are moved directly forward. While the overall appearance of this style of karate is one of elegance and refinement, the power of its techniques should not be doubted. Shitoryu blocks are short, efficient, and feature distinctive circular movements which make them very effective. The arms are kept in front of and close to the body at all times for protection. life confrontations happen at very close range. Techniques must, therefore, be completely effective against an opponent who tries to grapple or to take hold of you. Born in Okinawa in 1927, Kenza Mubuni is the son of the founder of Shitoryu Karate. He grew up in his father's karate dojo in the Kansai region of Western Japan. In addition to his distinctive family name, he inherited from his father what is now one of the most widespread styles of karate. Hijiati Goho, the five methods of striking with the elbow exercise, appeared in the original 1929 syllabus. Its object is to formulate essential elements of the style and to make them easier to learn.
In the Orient, the number eight signifies completeness or infinity. This is echoed in the Tenshin Hapo exercise in that, with its mastery, attacks from eight, in this sense, all directions can be dealt with effectively. Five principles are an important, if little known, part of the Shikoryu syllabus. Rakka, the first principle, means to block with such force that if the technique were applied to the trunk of a tree, the flowers would fall from its branches. Blocking technique should be performed so decisively that an attack would not just be halted but actually defeated with a single forcefully applied technique. This principle dictates that one flows with an opponent's attack, responding to it with fluid movement. Kushin deals with the control of an attack using body movement that originates in the knees. By keeping the spine straight and using vertical movement to control body height, little effort is required to counter even a vigorous attack. The fourth principle of evasive body movement is obvious, but is deceptively difficult to master. By understanding the direction and timing of attack, no. one can simply avoid it. No. No. The last principle of Hangeki follows naturally from the others. When the opponent attacks, a block and simultaneous counter are applied to deal with the aggression. As in all things connected with his creation, Ken Wamabuni insisted that the principle of yo ryu bi apply. That is, techniques should be useful, yo, and have flowing movement and rhythm, liu. From a combination of these should come bi or beauty. Everything should be practical but have a utilitarian elegance that is apparent to both the expert and casual observer. The applications that follow are those of the basic pinnan cutters of Shito Ryu Karate. Ken Wamabuni was a pioneer, and his thinking, years ahead of that of his contemporaries, his systemization of karate was clearly well planned and well executed, and designed to make it available to the general public, while preserving its unique value as a martial art.
This form of exercise was favored over free sparring by many of the most prominent masters of karate. Both Kenwa Buni and Chojo Miyagi experimented with protective equipment during the 30s, hoping that it would allow safe simulated combat. However, powerfully applied techniques still caused concussions through the thickest protection, and broken feet and hands were common. They quickly reverted to prearranged sparring to prevent injuries, and also because protective equipment limited natural movement and therefore inhibited technique. Many movements and combinations of movements are expressed in Hoke Kumite. These exercises are a manifestation of the principles of Yo, Byu, and Bi. The combination of the Itosu, Higona, and other traditions by Ken Wamabuni made Shito Ryu a complex and wide-ranging style with more than 60 formal exercises or kata. Kata that Mabuni insisted had to be performed as they were intended by their creators and not changed. The Nahate, or Goju Ryu Kata, kept their powerful hard and soft movements, as is so evident in the performance of Tensho and Sanshin. While the Itosu Katas continue to be fast and springy in their performance.
Kenwa Mabuni was, in his day, considered the foremost expert on kata in Japan, and many teachers would visit him to profit from his knowledge. His son carries on in this tradition. Shinsei is a combination of Gekisai Daichi and Gekisai Daini that were developed by Kenwa Mabuni's friend, Chojun Miyagi. Seipai is a kata that Kenwa Mabuni probably learned from Kanryo Higona during his days as a student of Nahate. Juroku, literally number 16, was developed by Ken Wamabuni. Rohai, common to many styles of karate, was originally a tomari te kata.
It is frequently said that karate exists within the kata, that they contain all techniques and with visualization, all combinations of techniques. For this reason, karate masters often seem to be actually locked in combat when performing kata. It will be seen also that every performance of a kata varies in an infinitesimal way, just as every real confrontation does. A kata, for which the applications are unknown, is like a treasure casket without a key. There is little point in performing the often complex motions of a formal exercise unless it is possible to clearly visualize their ultimate purpose. <coughs> Much of what is now considered Shotokan Kata comes from Ken Wamabuni, who would coach Gichin Funakoshi and his students on their frequent trips to his Osaka dojo. Yasuhiro 
Konishi and Hirono Ryotsuka, the founders of Urobu Kai and Wadoryu Karate respectively, were also greatly influenced by Mabuni, as were most Japanese karate instructors of the time. It is fair to say that with his senior, Choju Miyagi, Mabuni built the foundation upon which modern karate is constructed. The work of Kenwa Mabuni was continued by his sons and senior students Tani, Sakagami, Kuniba and others, and from them to the current generation of instructors. Kenwa Mabuni's legacy is as valuable today as it was 60 years ago, and all students of karate profit in one way or another from it. Shitoryu exponents figure prominently in the world of both traditional and competition karate. They have certainly been among the founding fathers of the karate movement outside Japan from the early days. Perhaps this is a reflection of the depth and quality of the style. Perhaps an indication of the value of traditional training methods. Perhaps they are simply continuing the tradition of bridging two apparently contradictory schools as the founder of the style did so long ago. As a young man, living and training in his father's dojo, Kenzo Mabuni was personally acquainted with the great names of the karate world. Choujo Miyagi, Gichin Funokoshi, Yasuhiro Konishi, all were welcome and frequent visitors to the Mabuni household in the 30s and 40s. As the growth of modern karate has been so rapid, we may be in danger of losing our contact with the past and therefore with the foundations upon which the art is built foundations that we will examine more closely in the interview that follows. When did your father start karate? When he was 13 years old. Who was his teacher? Itatsu Yatsutsumi sensei and Higaona Kanryo sensei, both teachers. Did your father visit mainland Japan before moving his family there? Yes, he went to Osaka to look for a house. After he found a house, we all moved to Japan. When was it you all moved? In 1929, just before my second birthday, in May of that year, so it must have been April. Why did he decide to leave Okinawa? To spread karate. Do you know the exact date that your father formally called his style Shitoryu and why? He took a character from each of his teacher's names and joined them to create the name Shito. Do you know the exact date? I don't. Sometime after the beginning of the Showa era, that is, after 1925. Does Shitoryu include Shurite, Nahate, and Fukien white crane forms of karate? Yes, Itosu Sensei's kata are very speedy, while Higaona Sensei's kata are all about power. The other kata are from instructors who originally came from Taiwan and mainland China. 
My father studied with them. How much influence did Gokenki have on your father? My father liked to study all martial arts. Go Kenki Sensei, who lived in Okinawa, came from China or Taiwan and was a teacher of white crane style of Kempo. My father learned the kata, ni paipo, from him. Is there any fundamental difference between the kata of Itosu sensei and Higaona sensei? Yes, they're quite different. The Itosu kata needs speed. The techniques need speed. Higaona sensei's kata require power and have an element of body conditioning. The Hitasu and Higaona kata look very different. Is this also how Gojuryu and Shotokan evolved? Of course. Karate comes from one source. The pioneers of karate took from the old ways and made modern karate from them. What impressions do you have of the top instructors of that time? I felt that Funakashi Sensei was my grandfather, who lived in Tokyo. That Miyagi Sensei was my uncle, who lived in Okinawa. Miyagi Sensei was only one year older than my father, so I called him uncle. How did your father and Chojo Miyagi get on? They had both been students of Higaona Sensei in Okinawa and were therefore what we call Kyodai or brother students. Did they meet often? When my father lived in Okinawa, they were always together. After Higeona Sensei died, my father eventually moved to Japan to fulfill his dream. Miyagi Sensei stayed in Okinawa because of his family's business. Whenever he came to Osaka, he stayed with us. He and my father would talk about developing and promoting karate late into the night. One day they were talking about kata and Miyagi sensei told my father that he had made a new kata and my father greatly approved of this. This kata was tensho. Did your father teach Funakoshi Sensei? Teach is the wrong word. My father did not teach Funakoshi Sensei. They trained and studied together. Did Funakoshi Sensei come to see your father? He would come to Osaka and my father would go to Tokyo. They were both from Okinawa, so naturally they would visit each other. My father was a younger man, so he respected Funakashi Sensei very much. I think this is how Shotokan technique was born. When Funokashi came to see your father, did he come alone? Sometimes he came alone, but as he got older, I think he brought other instructors with him.
いろんな先生方を同伴されたと思います。Can you talk about Higona Kanyo, Sensei? So, this is what I have heard about him from my father. I just know what I have heard about him from my father. I just know what I have heard about him from my father. I think because of his business. He learned karate there and later taught it in Okinawa. I heard stories like this. Did you teach exactly what your father taught you about Chitoryu karate? Yes, that is a natural thing. Yes, of course. My father passed away only 40 years ago, so my memory is still very clear. I only know his techniques, and I repeatedly practice what I learned from him. Can you explain for us what your father taught? The Shitoryu syllabus, kata, the five principles of blocking and tension hapo? Yes, it is our technique and it has a purpose and a reason. The five principles of blocking, Jochu Ge, dropping or lowering the body is called Raka. Flowing is Rusui. Moving the body evasively is called Tenshin. All of these are attacking. These are the five principles of blocking. Ten Chen Hapo is what we now call footwork. Front, back, angled movement. That's Ten Chen Hapo. How many kata are there in Shitoryu Karate? There are 62 kata, but there are some kata that my father didn't teach. I think he was going to make these kata public, but he passed away at the age of 64 years before he could. The kata, which he never made public, I have never showed to anyone. Compared with other styles of karate, Shitoryu has a lot of unique kata. Why do you have so many? Because Shitoryu inherited both Itosu Sensei and Higaona Sensei's kata, it naturally follows that we have more kata than other styles. Your father created some kata of his own. Can you tell us about them and what inspired him to create them? He was devoted to karate and wanted to make his own kata and leave them to the next generation. How many kata did your father create? If I include those kata he created but did not teach to students, a great many. He made six of his own kata public during his lifetime. What are their names? Ju Raku, Shiho Kosho Kun, Matsukatsi. Aoyagi, Shinsei, and Meiyojo. Can you tell us about your mother? I understand she had a strong character. How did she influence your father and his life?
She devoted her life to my father, and with her help, he became prominent. She was a great woman. She lived her whole life with me and passed away finally in my home. How did she help your father in his chosen profession? She understood my father's honesty and therefore devoted her life to helping him achieve his goal. Please tell us the story about your mother helping your father train when it was raining. Soon after he woke up in the morning, my father would train on the makiwara. I saw and heard it. When it rained, she would put me on her back, as I was just an infant, and hold the old-fashioned paper umbrella over my father to shield him from the rain while he pounded the punching board. I understand that your mother worked even after your father's death to support him and his work. Yes. There was only my mother and myself to strive for my father's recognition. I understood how she felt. She was great in her own way and also deserves recognition. What do you feel is the true meaning of karate? The true meaning of karate is to train for everyday life. You must practice what you believe and believe in what you practice. You have seen karate growing for about 60 years now. What do you think of this generation of students and instructors? You know, Japan is very peaceful now, and people worry a lot about appearances. In America, the karate students have a lot of power, but they need to learn correct karate. Then their technique will grow and mature, and they will become good karate men. If they are taught properly, they have the potential to become world class. Karate may soon become an Olympic sport. Do you think the focus of training and therefore karate may change? I don't particularly mind sport karate, providing it's done well. But in real karate, you study your whole life, not just a few years for a specific competition, like the Olympic Games. I want them to keep on training after their competition days are over.
Tournaments are all right as long as the rules are respected and as long as instructors teach it correctly. What is your view of your father's style of chitolieu as it exists today? Some things are different from the original. The names of stances and other techniques, for example. I think some of the instructors learned a little karate, then came over here and started teaching. They should have been properly qualified before they started teaching. Students who study with these people are wasting their time. Are all of the Shitoryu groups in existence today descended directly from your father or his senior students? No, some of them have no connection with Shitoryu, yet they claim they are teaching it. This upsets me greatly. These people learn from books and videos, then claim they are something to do with us. This is slanderous. What would your advice be to today's instructors of any style who wish to teach traditional Japanese karate do? Not only learn kata movement, but the basic techniques that give the kata meaning. I want them to understand every small detail of the bunkai or applications. What advice would you offer students, both the new student and those who have been training for a year or so? Not only copy, but understand and also retain the instruction. Step by step, one thing at a time. That's the way to learn karate. Shitoryu is your father's legacy to you. Since you have succeeded him, have you seen growth in your movement? I am only here because of my father, of course. I exist because of the glory of his name. I am doing my best to spread karate and still want to make even more effort to spread the karate that my father, Funakoshi Sensei and Miyagi Sensei, left to us.